please help me welcome to the podium for your encouragement this morning, our beloved, gentle, sweet Reverend Anne. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Let me add my own words of welcome to our, our, center, our center for spiritual living this morning, our sanctuary, and to a wonderful new year. And included in that warm welcome is also to our extended audience on the World Wide Web. Isaiah 55, verse 1 states, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. End of quote. My encouragement is titled, Dare to Demonstrate Your Intentions for 2014. It cost no money. Every day of our lives, we are called upon to set intentions. And at the beginning of each calendar year, both objectively and subjectively, we set overarching intentions for new experiences for the entire year and beyond. At the very beginning, some of us may have selected these intentions on a mental, in a mental exercise. Some may have visioned meditated, and the result are the intended directions to pursue over this new year. But there is right now no tangible evidence of these intentions. They are still in the realm of the unseen. My question to everyone this morning, including myself, now we have desired the demonstrations of these intentions, how do we feel? Excited, elated, enthusiastic, thrilled? Is there an underlying sense of purpose, resolve, to follow through every stage of awareness as the intention moves through idea, your emotions, your intellect, conviction, embodiment, and finally manifestation in the physical world? Can you honestly now dare to assume you are exactly what you want to be? Dare to assume that you are where you want to be, even though reason and your sense is denied. If you do, will it work? It does not cost you a penny to try it. As Neville and you thought, writer reminds us. Hence, as Isaiah has said it, Come buy wine, buy milk, without money. This Bible scripture suggests that everything that we, we intend to experience in 2014 is possible. How can we do this? Neville declares that we must use our incredible imagination to guide us in the pathway of demonstration. He states, and I quote, imagination is the basis of all that is. What is now proved to be true, as far as we are concerned, was once only imagined, end of quote. Imagination plus faith is the stuff out of which we fashion our world. So let us think about the faculties of imagination and faith. So we can dare to demonstrate all that we have conceived of. But let me hasten to remind ourselves we cannot make anything happen. Imagination and faith are faculties of mind that we utilize in the natural flow of life, as they are not something exterior to us or a facility to be manipulated. Butterworth states, and I quote, much stress is given to the art of demonstration. This is good, for through knowledge of the working of spiritual law, we can rise to a new level of health and success. However, if we do not build on the consciousness of our source in the universal flow of life, we try 
to make the law work for us in the form of the good we desire. Actually, there is no way we can make divine law work for us or anyone. Can you influence gravity to work for us? Or the sun to shine for us? All we can or need to do is get into our right relationship with the law. Right relationship is based on our attitudes and actions that we take so as not to place barriers in our way because divine law is always working. Butterworth goes on to say, through what Telhard calls the unimpeachable wholeness of the universe, wherever we are and whatever may the need be, God is with us. The whole universe stands behind us to a degree equal to the full extent of the need. All the powers of heaven and earth are with us, working on our side. Ella Wheeler Wilcox states in conjunction with the above, that which the upreaching spirit can achieve. The grand and all creative forces know they will assist and strengthen as the light lifts up the acorn to the oak tree's height. Thou hast but to resolve, and lo, God's whole great universe shall fortify thy soul." End of quote. Thou hast but to resolve to move out of the way of the flow of the law, and all the intentions will be manifested experiences. In our resolve to not create barriers, we must allow our faculty of imagination, supported by faith, to guide us through the unerring process of living a richer, fuller life. It must be understood that the spirit of truth projects these ideas through our mind and our faculty of imagination molds them into shape. The imagination clothes them with substance and reflects the character of the ideas into consciousness. Therefore, one can see why ideas are individualistic, unique, original, fresh, novel, innovative, as our mind is part of the one mind where all information and ideas reside as well as the potential for the new and the different. Dr. Holmes reminds us, and I quote, just imagine yourself surrounded by mind, so plastic, so receptive, that it receives the slightest impression of your thought. Whatever you think, it takes up and executes for you. Every thought is received and acted upon, end of quote. In other words, the dominant pattern we provide will be our demonstration. So from the very beginning, if we remain conscious of the flow, then it behoves us to ensure our access to the mind of God, the presence of God, be pure and clear. Our imagination provides us with a vision beyond appearances because there is that within each one of us that knows our potential and our possibilities. So we can therefore not be concerned if the concepts, ideas, images that project through us are not understandable as to how they will become physical realities. There is nothing to limit us except our thought about our identities. Remember, we are one with God. Therefore, our imagination will project the divine ideas from the same mind that is in Christ Jesus unto our consciousness. We must remain open and receptive and not discredit some of our visions as Oh, it's only my imagination. It is more than that. It is a spiritual gift, one of the powers of man given to us to assist in the deepening of our awareness. It is our link between our present consciousness and that of unseen possibilities. If we allow ourselves to tap into the realm of possibilities, new ways, new insights will open to truly experience the fullness of God's richest life through us, for us, as us. How do we do this? The first step is attunement. Tuning into the presence of God within. Recognizing where we are, the mind, the power of the infinite is there. Stop for a few minutes. Removing all focus from the exterior the limitations, the present beliefs, wants, needs, and fears. And in the silence, just be. 
If thoughts or wild scenarios come to mind, just let them flow through without engagement. They are a product of emotional energy for release. Bless them and let them pass. Just remain in that state of being. Know that God knows itself right where you are. And we know that you and I know ourselves as God. This means we are one in consciousness. Each one of us is a living, moving, walking, talking energy field of God. Within that energy field is everything that we could ever desire because we dwell in the kingdom of God now. As in Matthew 6, we know it is the Father's good pleasure to give us this kingdom now. And on top of that, he knows that we have need of the desired good in our life's experience, or else we could not be aware of these desires, much less imagine them. So let us not limit the visions that flow through our mind and are projected through the imagination. As we deepen our awareness, Literally, the reality of our being one with God fills our individual consciousness until a feeling of peace comes through, sometimes joy. If you have been closing your eyes, gently open them now. Then, secondly, pose the question, Father, Reveal thyself as intentions for 2014. Let the formless ideas come through from within into a feeling, a certainty of that which we intend to desire as manifestation in our daily lives for the new year. These intentions could be increased spiritual growth and unfoldment, the development of consciousness of the presence of God, the attributes of spirit, for instance, increased life, love, light, wisdom, understanding, peace, power, beauty, and joy. With that, we know the images, the feelings, the urgings to do, to be, to act will come through. But always the manifest experience will always be that which gives us more life, more love, more wisdom, more understanding, more peace, more power, more beauty and joy. Remember, with visioning, we align ourselves in consciousness with a divine purpose of being, an instrument or vehicle or channel for the presence of God to pour forth. We open ourselves already accepting that we are now a place in consciousness through which the reality of being must reveal itself and flow through. Dr. Michael Beckwith states, and I quote, we become a living embodiment of God's ideas if we let God work through us, end of quote. Whereas on the other hand, visualization involves having an idea of what we want to accomplish or how we want to experience our life and then imaging the goal as already achieved and establishing the requisite mental and emotional vibrations to bring it forth into physical manifestation. That is the difference between visualization and visioning. For instance, we want more customers to enjoy our product. That is the idea. Mentally and emotionally, we need now to feel that scenario as if as if it already has been achieved. What do I mean? If you have ever been on a busy shop floor, you can easily see this with me. Just detach yourself and just, you're standing at the top and just looking at a particular display. See the am amazing amount of shoppers around your product display. Enthusiastically, they tell each other how good the product is, how useful it is 
fantastic price, the enjoyment they get from using the product. Can you imagine the vibes of satisfaction, enthusiasm, joy? And guess what? It is infectious. It draws other customers to that particular display, and pretty soon, the shelves are empty. That supreme feeling of joy, providing a service for so many satisfied and contented customers. Take it a step further. The benefits of the sale are shared with the employees of the store. Think of their happy families at home. The entire town, their or country, as well as the creators of the product, enjoying this product. The offshoot services that are benefiting from your product. That intense feeling is now transmitted to mind during the visualization process. What do you expect to happen after that? Whatever is necessary for the end result, the final demonstration falls into place easily, effortlessly, and joyously. That is visualization. Dr. Holmes reminds us that in visualization, our thought creates a mental picture of our desire and presents this image to mind with the full expectancy that it accompl its accomplishment is now a fact. Meanwhile, we should patiently and expectantly wait for the law of evolution or unfoldment to bring the object of our visualization in place. We should always remember that the law need not be coerced. It needs to be recognized and consciously used. The law takes the direction of our thought and itself finds the ways, the methods, and means of manifestation. Demonstration is not accomplished by personal power or might, but by spirit, end of quote. Where does faith fit in all of this? Faith is one of the faculties or powers that make up our spiritual nature. There is no possibility that we do not have faith. We are faith because the presence of God itself is faith. Hence, as a result of our being incarnated in the image and likeness of God, we are faith. It is part of our being. We have no choice in the matter. The only slip is that we can choose not to exercise it or to be aware of it. This faculty is our given ability to draw our good from unseen to visibility. What is the difference between faith and belief? We can believe anything. It is changeable as a result of facts known or unknown. But faith is an activity of truth within one's individual consciousness. Goldsmith defines faith as spiritual perception entirely apart from conscious thought or human reason. Faith is a transcendental quality, an act of the soul. Faith is the ability to see the invisible, hear the inaudible, know the unknowable, and this is possible only through inner vision or spiritual perception. Faith is not something generated in us towards God, a quality and activity of God imparted by God to us. So as the master Jesus stated in Matthew 17 verse 20, if ye have faith as a mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, remove, hence to yonder place and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you." End of quote. I will repeat the last phrase, and nothing shall be impossible to you. So there is no need to leave your good or intentions of 2014 as doormat potential. We only have to exercise our spiritual qualities. How do we continue to nourish our intentions until manifestation? Our spiritual practices will absolutely assist us in the discipline, control, and focus of keeping our minds stayed on the presence of God within us. Once we keep our eyes single, the byproducts of courage, patience, and commitment become a part of the natural way to behave. We have courage which is the ability to stay focused in spite of the doubts, fears that may beset us, or even events that may not look like they will assist us in the furtherance of our goals. But we can redirect, 
every thought or idea that is not compatible with the good desired. Patience is our capacity to wait and still praise and acknowledge the manifested intentions, even though there is no tangible evidence. It is more than expectancy. It is knowing you know, and nothing can move you from that state of mind. It is commitment, willingness to follow through every urging or accepting that you are impelled by spirit to be and to do what is required for the physical demonstration of your vision, no matter what. It means staying emotionally engaged to the process of transformation that is taking place in our inner world so we can be the vibrationary match to attract all that is necessary for the fulfillment of the desired good. Walk the walk and talk the talk. How do we stay emotionally engaged? By always entertaining or inculcating a spirit of gratitude in all that we think, say, or do. A joyful heart filled with gratitude and appreciation for life has its own spiritual energy that literally opens doors of opportunities. It is said that the spiritual energy eliminates negative thought patterns that may still re reside in consciousness, but also it has its own magnetizing forces that attracts all kind of good things to the individual. Gratitude also allows us to stay present in the moment so we can actually exercise our faith in the imminent demonstration of our intentions. With gratitude in our hearts, we feel the achievement of these intentions as part of our present conscious experience. Maya Angelou in her book, Wouldn't Take Nothing for My Journey Now, tells that when a master drummer prepares to carve a new drum, he, appro he approaches the selected tree and speaks to the spirit residing there. In his prayer, he describes himself, his experience, and his expertise. Then he explains his intent. He assures the spirit that he will remain grateful for the gift of the tree and that he will use the drum for honorable purposes." End of quote. Friends, we are all master drummers at the beginning of 2014. We have somehow selected the intentions for 2014. We describe ourselves as individualizations of the Most High God joint heirs with Christ. Our expertise are the capacities and abilities that we have been given as gifts to share in this world. Our experience is that each one of us has been endowed with the nature of God and therefore has access to the knowledge, wisdom that is infinite by virtue of the truth of our being. We are part of the one mind that is God. We don't have to be shy or brash about our capacities and capabilities. We have what it takes to birth all these intentions. They found us. Therefore, the entire universe is waiting on us to do our part to bring these intentions into fruition. They are divine ideas whose time is now. We do not have to limit the expansion of our consciousness to allow the word of God to be made flesh and dwell among us. It is our time now. Let us seize the possibilities now and allow the presence of life to flow unimpeded through us. What is our intent? Our intent is that all these manifested intentions will make the world a place that works for everyone. We live by example, not by doctrine. We will remain teachable, full of praise and gratitude that we are the selected channels for the extraordinary manifestation of good that will bless the entire cosmos. So we will remain honorable in all our thought, word, and deed. Always seeing the Christ in all men and in all situations. So let us play on the drums of our desires and the harmony of life will be lifted up in chorus to bless the entire humankind. In 1995, Maya Angelou read a brave and startling truth to the world in the, at the United Nations at its 50th anniversary. I will read the last verse. When we come to it, we must confess that we are the possible. We are the miraculous, the true wonder, 
of this world. That is when, and only when, we come to it. We are the possibility. We are the miraculous. We are the true wonder of the world. Namaste.